Hello. Hey, everybody. Great to see you here. Hello to everybody in the chat. Hello to the members of the channel as well. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where in the mornings I recap the Scientology news. It has the internet buzzing, share about my 35 years in Scientology, leaving with three generations of my family, and I do interviews in and around the community, which you're about to catch one right now. So hit that like button on your way in, and go ahead and check your subscribe button too, just in case. All right, everybody, I am very excited. Today, I'm going to have back Tori Chrisman, Tori Magoo44, as she goes by here on YouTube. She is a longtime, longtime critic of Scientology, was protesting Scientology back in the days of Anonymous, worked on the other side, worked for the Office of Special Affairs for a while. And we are going to hear more about Tori's story. Today, we're actually going to share, we're going to read through some of the actual program that Scientology wrote to restrain and muzzle her. And I do believe it's going to blow your mind, but let's, let me make sure I did my housekeeping. Thank you to my mods. I think my Tony's here right now. Dip might be popping in or not, but uh, yes. Welcome everybody. Tori Magoo 44. Yay. Hey, thank you for having me on, Natalie. Yes, always a pleasure. We got to sit down just, a, I don't know, 10 days or so ago, and then we got to talking about this program that was written by Scientology to restrain and muzzle you. Right. Just, it, and then I read through it, and it has it's just- a 25-step program. Yeah. <laughs> muzzle Tori in 25 steps or less. <laughs> Epic fail to quote anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Epic fail because here you are hardly restrained or muzzled. Right. So we are going to read through the program, but you're right. It was an utter and total fail. Let's, you know, for a lot of people in the audience might not know or understand these programs that come out of the office of special affairs to handle critics of Scientology. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'd never seen one. You I saw Paul at Cooper's. I think they did one on Paul at Cooper. Oh, they did. They had a whole program with yeah. Paul at Co Cooper trying to completely put her in prison. Him. They were trying to put her in prison and they were close. But then some, someone, I forget who, but they broke into the, it was the biggest break in of the United States government. Mm -hmm. And because of that, um, they did a big bust on, the guardian's office and they found her program and she was absolved. Exactly. They found the equivalent for her of what we're going to go over today for you. Right. The program that, that Scientology wrote with the intention to shut you up. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's. I, yeah. <laughs> I love what you said the other day. I highlighted it this morning on the recap where you were basically telling Osa what's up. How they're just like you're you're slacking, you're failing. Totally. It's like it's never gonna change. It's only gotten worse. I escaped out in 2000. And at the time, even though I had been working with my auditor and cons who's a consultant, and um I at the time I thought my best friend, and I he had me opening up these phony accounts on the internet to handle the critics, right? Yeah. So I, I really didn't believe they did fair game. I mean, I was positive that that was just made up. It was on the internet by these evil critics. And that's what he told me. And I thought, oh, okay. But then I go to leave and, and Bob Minton says, just get, a, just get a cab to LAX and I'll have a ticket there in 2000. And <laughs> Tony, I can imagine Tori shutting up. <laughs> It's true. Anyway, I go to get my van and it, I, it, it doesn't come. And I call them up and I go, what happened? And they go, someone anonymously canceled your van. And I'm like, oh my God, these guys for two years, probably 10 years on and off had been telling me they do this kind of stuff. And I was like, no, 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 no. I stood up in court against Margaret Singer, who's an author, saying, no, that's not true. They don't have fair game. They canceled it. You know, all this stuff. I really thought that. And that mm -hmm. van being canceled was the beginning. I swear to God, from LAX to Tampa Airport, 
I changed from being a Scientologist, true believer, to absolutely 100% an activist in that time because they proved it to me. Yep. And as per usual, Scientology creates their own enemies and nobody creates and turns out better activists than Scientology. (laughs) (laughs) Congratulations. And I love all the live streamers that are now streaming and helping out and, you know, critics before them, you know, that these are people that were never in, but they hear what happened and they're like, wait a minute. You know, like Jessica Pomodessa was on TikTok just making funny videos about Scientology. Streets LA was just over by one of their buildings. And they said, you can't be here. And he went, pardon me? Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and that began it with those guys. And now they're full-time activists. I mean, they're, I mean, he still does the thing with the police and she's doing some of her goofy stuff because she's very funny. She's very yeah, funny. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but she's way more of an <laughs> activist now. And that's thanks to Scientology. That's right. Because they got them kicked off of TikTok. That's the thing some people watching this may not know, is that Scientology got both of their accounts on TikTok that were huge kicked off. Yeah, Jessica had over a million followers on TikTok. Right. Yeah, they got her TikTok shut down. And they owe her a bunch of money, too. Yep. Yep. She's still working on that, working on that hard to get that turned around. I know. I bet it gets turned around. I know. (laughs) Let's pull this up. I wanted to say thank you to Clever Nitwit for becoming a member of the channel, though. Hip, hip, hooray. Yeah. <laughs> and you can su- subscribe over on my side, too. That's right. Tori let's then, let's take a little peek here, everybody. You can see if you go to Tori Magoo 44, <laughs> you can subscribe to Tori's channel. She is not yet monetized, but if you want to show any financial support, she's got her cash app right there. Be sure to like the video over on her page too and subscribe as well because she is creating some great content, including you're a bit of a night owl. I am. I do Midnight with Magoo because I am. There's so many people starting with you and then all the way through the day that do different things. And I thought I'm a night owl. So I just thought I kind of started it as a joke thinking, well, maybe some people will be up. And I started Midnight with Magoo. And of course, nobody's there at first. And I thought, "Uh oh, this isn't going to work. So I started reading my SP to Claire. Yeah, that was the very beginning of it, because I thought, well, I'll just read this. And then people popped on. It was amazing. And now it's become really, you know, there's a there. It's not huge, but it's it's four different continents of people. Someone pointed that out to me that that they're on four different continents. It's amazing. I mean, back in the day when you first started protesting Scientology, <clears throat> the technology, of course, was so different. Did right. you ever think you'd be able to protest and stand up against Scientology from the comfort of your own home? <laughs> I have been for years. So that that one I have for years because I, I used to make videos. But yeah. whether I could do it from the comfort of my own home and be able to have people chatting with me, yeah. no, that I didn't. And, and basically just the support has been fantastic because originally, I mean, I've always counted on the critics because they were people that were never in and people came on right away. People followed me across the country and that one big LAX to Tampa, they followed me. And these people used to write me from Seattle and they would say, Magoo, we're never in, we were never in Scientology. We're not critics, we're not ex-Scientologists but we saw that them chase you across the country. So every morning we now wake up and we come in our office and we find out what happened to Magoo today. Because every (laughs) day something was happening. It was, because there were only like four people speaking out then with their names and I was one of them. And so every day they were doing shit with me and I would make videos about it and talk about it. Yeah, And that's so great. And and, and the ironic thing is when I left, LAX, I said, I'm not going to speak out. I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to make videos. But because they kept picking on me all the way across the country, mm-hmm. by the other side, I was like, okay, let's go. Yep. They made an enemy out of you. Definitely. Patricia Patrick, hip, hip, hooray. Thank you so much for becoming a member as well. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to read through some of this. We're not going to pull it up on the screen because there's some private info on there that we don't want flashed around. 
So I am going to, I think, Tori, what we'll do is I'm going to read through a couple of these things and ask you some questions about it. If you have questions today, everybody, please put question in all caps and then have your question follow. And we'll try to get to as many of those as we can. Right. So let's jump into, let's see. Now in Scientology, this came from the C organization, the Office of Special Affairs. And in Scientology, they write a program to do everything. They really do. They write a program for this. They write a program for that to do anything. It's basically like a glorified to-do list with very specific targets. Now, the purpose of this program, and this is what it says right in it, written by the Office of Special Affairs in Scientology, the purpose is to dispense with a source of in theta, which is interbulated theta in Scientology. It's bad news for them. And black PR, so black propaganda, basically propaganda. So to dispense with a source of N-theta and black PR so that Scientology can get on with its expansion unimpeded. (laughs) But it also says in it, the goal is to muzzle Tory. It actually has that in quotes. It is. It is the major target. It says major target. target. Tory dismissed. Tory dismissed as an attacker or totally restrained and muzzled. That's word for word, right from the program. Yeah. And so the first part of it, what Scientology does is, you know, they've got some primary targets where you have to read and understand the program. One of the targets, which is a vital target, as it's called, is to arrange the needed funds to use the professionals needed to get the product on investigations, et cetera, as set forth in this program. So that sounds, it means like to, you know, go ahead and get the money approved so that we can pay these lawyers or private investigators to get this program done. Does that sound right? Yeah. All right. So let's see here. One of the primary targets is to clear your actions with counsel beforehand. So it sounds like whoever's executing these targets, they're saying, hey, check in with the lawyer before you do it. Wow. That, I, I didn't even see that. That is very telling because they're basically saying, check in with a lawyer before you do this. Right. So they know that they need to walk a line. That's the thing. Now, one of the, the first operating target and the operating targets are targets like these are your, these are your action steps that you're going to go ahead and take. Right. You had gone on, Tori, you were on television on channel two speaking out about Scientology. And that was one of the issues that they had. So as part of this program, the number one, the operating target number one, and Harold is your ex-husband. Is that correct? Okay. It says two. number one, get Harold to call up channel two and complain about the fact that they have put his ex-wife on TV and let her lie about their marriage and other things she has said and get their agreement not to use Tori any longer as a source of information about Scientology. Amazing. Yeah, I know they, they that never happened because they continued interviewing me. So that didn't work. But but the ironic thing is that Harold supposedly I don't think it's him. I think it's either Bill Yachty or Osa wrote a letter saying it's from Harold with all these lies about me on the Internet that he, they're flat out lies. And yes, I've yes. said any time because people I've talked to people forever and it's sort of like you can see in their face at first, they're like, well, how do I know if Scientology is telling the truth or you are? And I go, well, here's an easy way. I am willing to talk to anyone, anytime, anywhere, anyone. Yeah. They bring any CEO member over here and see if they'll talk to me. They can't. They're not allowed to. They'll be declared suppressive. Yeah. You know, so there's the difference. You, I go, you look at both sides and you make up your mind. That's so right. They are not allowed to talk. They are not allowed to communicate. Yeah. Don Meredith, hip hip hooray. Thank you so much for becoming a member on the channel. Appreciate that. So let's see what else they got here. So they also tried to get you, they wanted to get you fired from your job. And one of the targets was to get Harold to call up the manager of the, of your employer and complain that she has been telling lies about him on television while she, while she is supposedly at work. (laughs) 
The interesting thing is I did do a CNN interview, but it had nothing to do with Harold. It was a CNN interview there while I was working. They CNN called me from New York and said, we need to interview you. And I said, where? And so we picked a park and they said, just look for a big white thing. That'll be us. So I go to the park on my break and there they are. They put Anderson Cooper in my ear and he's asking me some questions. And anyway, it was a very short interview. And by the time I got back to work, which was 15 or probably five minutes away, yeah, at 315, it was on TV, the interview. Wow. But my but they'd edited mine down to just a little bit. Before Anonymous, every interview I did was usually an hour, but edited down to like most of it being Tom Cruise or a celebrity and my little bit being, you know, it was always the worst part of my interview they would put on there. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting, too, how they're using, they try to use your ex-husband to execute some of this and do this. And that's what they'll do is contact people. It could be an ex-husband. It could be family members that are still in Scientology and have them come out with these hit pieces and stories and information about the person who is questioning Scientology, questioning their, their abusive practices and think that that's, you know, like that's going to hold water or like, oh, your ex-husband called your job. Any person outside of Scientology you think would be like, well, I mean, if I want an opinion or I want to know something about somebody, get to know them, I'm not going to call their ex to say, hey, what can you tell me about Tori? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you base it on your own interaction. Right. And they never interviewed me at all. So mm -hmm. they never heard my side ever. That's why at that last protest that we or the the Easter protest, yeah, I said I went and talked to the police and they said you're trespassing and I said and they were two women and I said let's get something straight. These people owe me a million dollars and yeah. I only have one person because it says on the back of my SP declare her only terminal is the IJC via the continent or the Continental Justice Chief or, or the International Justice Chief via the Continental Justice Chief. And I said, I only have one person they'll talk to, and they've never talked to me in 24 years. And she goes, well, you know, that's not going to happen today. And I said, and I know that you say that every day, but today's the day I'm going to stay here. And she looked <laughs> at the men and she goes, just leave her alone. Because <laughs> they understood, you know, a million dollars is a million dollars. Yeah. And Miscavige, you know, you owe billions if you added up every ex-scientologist because the the policy says if they don't want to do it no matter what they've spent give them their money back get rid of them that's mm -hmm. what hubbard said that's yeah. in that's in policy in green and white yeah so if you took every one of us and however much we've spent you know because there's a lot of public that are out here also they may not be doing live streaming because I, I think i'm the main public that's live streaming but even Sea Org, you know, they owe yeah. money to the Sea Org. You know, it's it's like they owe a lot of money. And yeah, one of these days, that's going to come back and bite you in the ass. You'd be smarter to give me my million dollars and just that's it. Then yeah. just keep not, you know, pretend it's not there. Pretend it's out there. It's good. only getting bigger. We had, I think it was Jessica and Streets, right? Beginning with, with the live stream. Now there's... Fifth, this is how many live streams last week there were. This is how many. Yeah. <laughs> That's how many live streamers there are. And now there's over a hundred. So wow. it's like escalating monumentally. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely is. Now this program to, to restrain and muzzle you also included a target where it says to get Harold, and Harold is Tori, Tori's ex-husband, get Harold to send a letter to specific papers that have used Tori in the past and dead agent Tori and expose her lies. <laughs> yeah, if you knew my ex-husband at all, he's not that way. He, you know, we, overall, we had a wonderful marriage and we ended off, I mean, amicably, as much as we could. I mean, the church was, you know, it was because he stayed in Scientology. He was born in Scientology, but he's not that kind of guy. He, I know him. I, that's why I know Yachty was the one. My computer was stripped when I got back and various things were stolen. 
And I know it was Bill because Harold wouldn't do that. I just know him. First of all, he doesn't know how to even turn on a computer. So I know he didn't strip my computer, right? But Yachty did. And I know Harold just wouldn't erase all my videotapes of our, our child and all of the people that we knew. They were all erased, everything. You know, so those are things that I know Yachty came in and did because Harold wouldn't let Osa in here. So I know him. He, this isn't shit that he would do. It yeah. just isn't. They can put it on their stupid program, but it didn't work, did it? Did it fail? Fail, Osa. Fail. 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 Epic so fail. To quote Anonymous, because they were the first people I ever heard that from. Epic fail. And now you hear it a lot. <laughs> but they were the ones who first said it. Yep. There's Jessica Palmadessa. Oh, hi, Jessica. Story. How are you? I love you. Yeah. <laughs> got me started. She was the first one. My friend Andrew called up and said, you've got to look up. Jessica Pomadessa on TikTok. And I said, Andrew, I don't do TikTok. I'm not doing it. And he goes, you've got to look her up, Tori. And he's a critic. He was never in, but he, he yeah. worked right next to the testing center. So he, they made him a critic. You know what I mean? Because they kept oh, yeah. sending people down for a movie, a free movie. Mm. And he, he worked at the Egyptian. And he'd say, this is not for us. Go back to Scientology. Yeah. So, yeah. so he called me up and turned me on to Jessica. And when so I saw her, I was like, oh, my God, they are so out of their league. This is fantastic. Yeah, it is. So let's see. On here also is that they basically tried to get you fired by having, 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 it sounds like they were trying to get your ex-husband to call into your work and, you know, talk about that you're doing interviews and stuff on work time. And you explained that already. But they were also trying to where did it go here okay so i mean the funny thing about that is that company that i was working for i didn't know yeah. it at the time but it turned out they were a super i mean it was a really good company with a father that started it and they, they mostly had single women that were they were helping start businesses and it was yeah. really good but then he died and this other his daughter took over and hired this really creepy guy and a lot of younger people and they just didn't care at all so it turned in you can go to rip off reports and they had it was called smc special merchandise corporation and at the time they were all over rip off reports you know it was just like don't go there they're creepy and i finally found out i went into customer service and found out this company's awful you know, I was a coach thinking they were great. And after a while, I was there for a few years. So it's so ironic that they would have Harold call up and say, oh, you know, she's she's doing some bad stuff. These guys were awful. You know what I mean? It's like they, they would, if anything, they would just laugh in their face and say, really? You know, we're really yeah. worried about that. They try to, one of the targets here, it says, get the new client hook up with Tori and get coached by her to set up a personal business. As Tori gets the coaching done, get the client to become upset and bring it to her attention so she gets the warning that she is doing something wrong. Then get the new client to complain with management because Tori is not doing her job well and demand the money back because the client is no longer interested in SMC. So they literally tried to plant somebody right. to work with you as you would be the business coach and that they would then become upset and report you to your superiors. Well, like I said, they were a scam in themselves and I started holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this is part of the program to me was just a joke. And when I was a coach, I was one of the top producers and that's all they cared about. She's making money. I remember my, my, my manager was this great guy and he would, you know, I have the memory thing where I forget, especially administrative things like I'm supposed to. And they were changing something every day. And I realized the only reason they're doing this, and I explained it to my manager, is so that the middle management has a job with a lot of money. Right. Yeah. And they did nothing. Right. And so I and, and this is a true story with their middle management, the guy that was running it, running my manager and everything. And that guy came, I went in and said, look, you cut my pay, you know, just without even talking to me. 
Yeah. And he goes, let me pay you for the amount of time you've wasted. There were two men in there, but I'm the one woman. Here's the amount of time. And he gave me a quarter and I took it. I said, thank you. And I went back to my thing, put on my headset. And he came running out. He knew he fucked up. And I said, get away. I, I'm on a call. I've got to talk. You know, I'm talking to someone. And afterwards, I went to HR. And I said, have you ever read the book Blink? And the guy said, no. And he had a little golf course in there and everything. You know, it's like, these guys were just fuck offs. It's part of my language. I mean, they were like bad news. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> but they were just, you know, slackers. That's all they were. Yeah. So, so I said, look, this guy just paid me a quarter to for the time I wasted. And I said, I'm not going to sue you for that, but I promise you someone will. And when they do, they're going to, because he said, yeah, we've had a lot of complaints about him. And I said, really? And are, are they in writing? And he said, oh yeah, we've got a whole bunch. And I said, well, let me tell you this, because in the book Blink, they talk about doctors and they say there's three reasons doctors get fired or, you know, they lose their job. And, and the main one is they're rude to people. And I, and I said, this guy is rude to everybody except, and especially women. And I said, somebody's going to come in here and sue you. And when they do, guess who they're going to come to first? And he, and I said, you, and he made over six figures. So yeah, he was yeah. making a good amount of money. And I said, they're going to come ask you, do, do you have any reports on this? And you have all those things in writing that you just told me. And three days later, he was fired. He, he, he announced, I have to go help my parents. And he was ah, out of there. Really? Yeah. But it was a really scammy business. So once I, you know, they fired 500 or 50 of us. We all turned 60 and they fired all 50 of us. So it had nothing to do with OSA. It was just yeah, age yeah. discrimination. Yeah, exactly. Their yeah. other targets in relation to your job were concurrently have other quote, clients, and even clients is in quotes, call into SMC and make complaints about Tori being rude and incompetent. Repeating target. So this is a target that they would repeat. Continue to make noise till the company has no choice due to the amount of bad publicity happening other than firing Tori. <laughs> the entire company was closed. Just so you know, that's how bad it was. I, start, I got into customer service and started people started saying they're ripping me off. They're saying it's $39.95 to join. And then they automatically charge my card $500. And they were pissed. And so I started, these were little 20 year olds that were managing it. And I'd go to them and I'd say, what is your name? What is your title? And I'd get it. And I'd say, okay, here's the deal. This person said they signed up for $39.95. Now you're charged from 500. And at first they go, well, that's just too bad. That's the policy. And I'd say, okay, I'm going to put that in the computer that that's your response to what I said. Is that okay? You know, and they'd go, you know what? This one time we can make an exception, right? And this went on and on and on. I just went to manager, to manager, to manager. What's your name? What's your title? I'm putting it in the computer. Okay, we'll make it. And they finally canceled that whole thing where they could just charge somebody's charge card. But they ended up out of business anyway because they were yeah. just a sleazebag place. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. So they also said this was part of Scientology's plan to get you restrained and muzzled and is operating target. I think we're down. Yeah, this is like operating target 17. Get complaints filed with the Better Business Bureau complaint website talking about dissatisfied customers and complaint about Tory. Keep it generic, but point out what we know about Tory to be true. Exam for example, forgetting things and being rude and, and arrogant. <laughs> I am rude and arrogant and forget things. So what? You know, I could sit with Better Business Bureau and they'd laugh. I mean, it's like, okay. I, I don't think I'm arrogant, but I, I can be rude. If, you know, I, I am a person who will say what I think. I'm not a person. I hate people who you can see they're thinking one thing, but they say another thing. I don't like that. So yeah, I'll yeah. say what I think and then let's hash it out. You know, it's like I have friends around the world and that's because I say what I think. But most people say, I appreciate that, mm -hmm. you know, that they'd, they'd rather hear what you what you're thinking yeah, than yeah. see it and go, I think I think they hate me. You know, I did that. I was working at a school and this lady was supposed to be cramming and she would always give me a dirty look when I go in there. So I finally wrote her a letter and I said, you know what, you're an embarrassment to New York City. I'm from Chicago. Yeah, You're from yeah. New York. Just if you hate me, just come up to me and say, I hate you. I don't <laughs> like that. 
but don't give me these dirty looks all the time. She took me out to lunch. She said, I had no idea I was doing that, Tori. I'm so sorry. It was really great. It was really fun. <laughs> that is funny. So, so the, the Better Business Bureau, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I, to me here in LA, you know, I don't know anybody that would call up the Better Business Bureau and they'd care. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, it's and like, that was okay. a repeating. That was a repeating target was getting the Better Business Bureau complaints brought to the attention of SMC, which is the company you work for at the time, from people who have watched SMC's advertisement on television. It says write these letters from various parts of the U.S. So it gives SMC the impression that this is everywhere and not a fixed location. Let's just wow. talk about that one target right there. This, this is, is so Scientology. Unreal. Yeah, this is the <laughs> Church of Scientology. The church of Scientology. Yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. It really is. I mean, I've read part of it, but I haven't read all of it. And I didn't even read that. I didn't realize it was the whole U.S. They were supposed to have people write from. Yeah, don't like, don't just write from one state. Write write it. Make it look like it's coming from multiple states. But that's what I'm saying. Everywhere it goes, to, it speaks to the level of the manipulation, right? And how far they will actually go. And look at how much you failed, Scientology. I know you're watching this. Somebody is, or you're taping it. And I want you to realize these live streamers are multiplying every day. And part of this is why they are. Because they hear you do this shit and they go, wait a minute, I can't just do nothing. I've yeah, got to yeah. say something. And they, everyone has a voice. I always say every voice counts because it does. It doesn't matter if you're just a voice. No one is just a voice. You, you are a voice and you can use it. I agree. I agree completely. Yeah. So they had that as a repeating target to keep sending in <laughs> these letters and making these phone calls. Then they had another repeating target. It says, keep Schwartz attacking Tori's reputation on the net by feeding repeated messages about her that make her look bad. So when you were on the internet, this was in the days of, uh, what was it, ASR? What was it called? ARS. ARS. And that Alt Religion was, Scientology. Alt Religion Scientology right. was an online message board. Right. So someone from someone or someone working at the direction of the office, office of special affairs would make up fake accounts, come in and spread rumors and try to create situations and spread the word about you. <laughs> I remember I opened up those phony accounts. That's so, right. Because when you were so working for the office, I was of special working, affairs. I, no, I wasn't working for the office of special affairs. I was working for my auditor. Mm. And friend who said, we just need to handle these evil people on the on the internet. Just open up one fake account and I'll uh, and come back. I don't think you can, but let's see if you can. And I did. And he went, oh, my God, this is in the 90s. And he said, you've just changed the hi history of the internet. <clears throat> and I said, how can I change the history of the internet if I don't know what it is? Right. So that yeah, was the yeah. beginning of it. But because I opened up these different phony accounts, and that was what got me to wake up and realize because they were getting more Nazi like. And, you know, I thought maybe maybe Miscavige just hired the mafia because this guy, Gavino, who was running it from Osa, was very Nazi like. And I thought maybe he just hired the mafia to kill somebody. And and, you know, like Andreas, who had Zenu.net, they didn't want Zenu being seen. So anyway, long story short. Obviously, that didn't happen. Now I forgot what I was talking about. What was I yeah, talking we're, about? You were talking about how they were trying to basically dead agent you on the internet and spread within the oh, group yeah. community that you were and in. They were writing tremendous lies about me. I mean, literally 365 days a year, tw almost 24 7. They had hired this lady, Diane Richardson, who anybody who knew ARS, because ARS was linear. So you guys all know it as websites, but it was just one linear thing where you'd post something like L. Ron Hubbard's a liar. And then Yachty would come in as Joan Smith and say, I don't think he's a liar. And nobody'd say anything. So then he'd come on as Frank and he'd say, why are you guys talking about L. Ron Hubbard? You know, he that guy has, the, he was the worst golf player in the world. And then he'd come on as Mary and say, well, I golf. And now they're all the way off onto talking about golf. Yeah, just arguing about it. 
And mm-hmm. that would be a win for him. He would literally, the other one was they divide and conquer, you know, try to get them against each other. Now, yeah. I didn't know all this shit when I was opening those accounts. He just said, I'm handling it. I won't tell you what I'm doing. And you trust me. So, you know, I'm not going to do anything illegal. And I was like, okay. And so, but then they got weirder and weirder. And when he said, don't call me Bill, call me Jack. And I'm not going to call you Tori. I'm going to call you Kate. And that's when I thought, wait a minute. Because the, they're the linear thing, just for people, I never finished it, was to drive it down the page and onto the second page. Because their view was no one ever reads the second page. But as it got weirder and more mafia-like, I started thinking Tori, because I'd never read the internet, which I know for a lot of people, you think, what's wrong with you? But back then, the, remember, we're in a Truman Show, and in that show, they were they had brainwashed us that the internet was all evil, and mm-hmm. you don't want to look at it. They'd put on a net nanny to block out any of the evil, so you only saw a piece of blue sky and how great Scientology was. That's right. That's yeah. Right. It was pretty weird. That's right. So they were doing a lot of that on the internet. There's multiple tar- top our targets that talk about doing that, spreading things about you on the internet. Um, but, um, and it said one of the targets was go through every single chat log and find every derogatory statement other people have made about Tori. <laughs> And then they then they wanted to get a specific page put up on what's RFW? Oh, Religious Freedom Religious Watch. Religious Freedom Watch, which they have. That was another ironic thing because they have a three page thing about me on all these lies. And the guy next door to me is a religious ex religious or um, Jehovah's Witness. Mm-hmm. And I told all my neighbors about this because I was all alone then. There was nobody on the internet supporting, like you're interviewing me. That wasn't happening back in that day. You're, you're by yourself yeah, and I'm yeah. here by myself. So I included my neighbors and I said, look, if some weird shit happens, just let me know. And my roommate was an ex Org member. And I come in, who's renting a room here at the time. And I come in and there's a huge stack of papers on my dining room table. And I said, what, what's that? And he goes, I don't know. The, room, the, the neighbor brought him over. And they had put the first page of Religious Freedom Watch on his doorstep. And then he and his girlfriend went around the entire block and picked them all up and brought them all to me. Ha ha, Lisa. Ha ha. <laughs> See, there's good people in the world. That's the thing that they, they promote, but they, they, don't, they really don't use that anymore. I don't think. I really don't think they think there's good people in the world. Just in Scientology. No, you are correct. They don't count on that because they don't think that there is an acknowledge that. The people outside of Scientology, that there's more genuineness and authenticity in relationships. And caring people. Exactly. Because you can have that. There's grace. There's forgiveness. There's so much of the things that don't exist in Scientology. So, of course, they can't have a concept. (laughs) <laughs> that somebody would do something so kind for a neighbor and to go right. grab all this BS right. being left at a doorstep. I they, al- they also said one of the steps on this program to restrain and muzzle Tori is to get postings, and this must be online, get postings designed to get Tori introverted into her health worries and repeat the message that she is a crazy person taking antidepressants. <laughs> I take medicine. I have epilepsy, which I've made very clear to everyone. And I take medicine for that, which they made me get off of when I was in the Sea Org and leave the Sea Org. I had multiple grand mal seizures. And that's why I forget things because I, my short term memory got all screwed up during that time. And yeah. luckily, my mother saw it and said, Tori, they're going to kill you. These people are killing you. And I said, no, no, Dianetics will fix it. She said, Dianetics is not going to fix it. This is a physical illness. It's not. But they always for 30 years tried to imply that my medication, well, 27 years, they tried to imply that my medicine was a psychiatric medicine. And I finally in, in 1997 took on the, no, no, it was 1989 because I was going on to OT7 and they said, you can't because you've got to get off your medicine. And I said, okay, that's it. I'm done with this. Because Bill Yachty was my auditor. And he yeah. said, we're going to sec check epilepsy. And I took the cans and I put them back on his side. And I said, you know what? You and the CS can sec check 
epilepsy. I'm done with this bill. I'm done. And he knew how much I'd struggled on it. <clears throat> so I, I took the CSs. I said, I, I wanted to go up to Ray Midoff, who was the top tech guy at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, he, I said, he knows me and I want him to look at my folders and see if I, if I need to get off this medicine or not. And it took about a month, but it came back with a huge program. They cr crammed, corrected every tech terminal on the flag land base on medicine. Mm. And they said, of course you can take her medicine. So you they know? actually figured out and said, no, you can't stop her from taking her medicine. So even Scientology at that point in this situation, because that's something we've heard about multiple times, people experiencing being taken off of their medication. Yeah. It really seems like it just depends on who you get in Scientology. Yeah, it's really, it's random. I don't, I think that, especially now, but back then they were really against all medicines, pretty mm -hmm. much all medicines. You could take an antibiotic or something like that, but yeah. they were against any kind of medicine and people suffered from it. It was yeah. awful. I mean, I have permanent, you know, like my neurologist said, every person that's had seizures has memory problems. That's just part of it because it directly harms your memory. And that's from Scientology. That's on them. That's not on me. Mm -hmm. you know, they, that, that was from them taking me off my medicine and me having multiple grand mal seizures to the point where one time a doctor said five more minutes and you would have been dead. Wow. So it's, it's intense. It's, it's just, out, it's ridiculous. And it's if you're just ridiculous. jumping in, we are doing, we're reading through a program written by Scientology by the office of special affairs with the goal that they state to restrain and muzzle Tory. One of the other steps was to, so a couple of these terms I'm going to need to define ahead of time. In Scientology, there's something called the third party law, which is that for two people to be having a disagreement, two organizations to fight, there has to be an unknown third party present, egging both sides on, you know, talking to both sides and stirring the pot, basically. And then you get Per Hubbard. Per Say Hubbard. that again. Per Hubbard. Mm -hmm. Per Hubbard, yes. So in Scientology, they call it third party to basically stir up, stir the pot. So this target is get the third party campaign to cut her communication lines with other suppressive people on ARS. And ARS was what again? Alt religion Scientology. It was the only news group back then. Online. Linear. Yeah. So get the third party campaign to cut her communication lines with other suppressive people on alt religion Scientology and IRC. What's IRC? Um, Internet relay chat. So that was sort of, the IRC was sort of like a bar on the internet. And you know, you'd come in, they'd be like, Magoo, hi, come on in. And there'd be all these different chats going at yeah. the same time. And you could go into a private room and talk to someone if you needed to ask them a question. Got it. So they were trying to get this third party campaign going to cut you off from other suppressives or people on these online message boards. <laughs> and they say, this is a known button. When she is not defended on ARS, she gets upset and gets depressed. I, I've never been depressed in my life. So that's a flat out lie. I, and I, I was just talking to someone about it last night that it's, it's like, I, my my one roommate who now passed away, but he did suffer from depression and I'd never been around depression. So I didn't really know how, that it, it's really a clinical, you know, thing where you really need medicine and stuff like that, which of course, being an XC org member, he wouldn't take, yeah. but you know, I, I saw how much he suffered from it. It's, it's awful, but I, I was, he was totally the glasses half empty. I was totally the glasses half full. That's my mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So no, I didn't ever suffer from depression. I did get upset about it, but I would always call Jesse Prince and Jesse Prince used to help run the church with Miscavige and mm -hmm. he would, and he's out now and he helped me escape. And he, he would tell me, Tori, listen to me carefully. I used to run this program. It's called psychological warfare. They are trying to drive you insane. Yeah. And so that was a, his original communication to me. Now, when I'd call him, he'd say, all right, listen to me carefully step away from the stove. And that is a great thing. I had it as a little sticky note on my computer for years. Mm -hmm. People would start attacking me. And, you know, originally you'd start trying to defend yourself and then more people would come on. It was just a mess. 
and no one would speak out. That's where I started TikTok, TikTok, time is on our side because that was the only thing I had was truth. And I knew eventually somebody would speak out, but it took a long time for people. Yeah. It took anonymous in 2008. I escaped out in 2000, 2008, they arrived. And that's when Nightline did Nightline and told our, our side of the story. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that it, it would be that, you know, if they tried something like this today, they still do. It's just in different forms. And right. that's why it's really, if you, whether it's Scientology or it's just an internet troll, or it's just somebody just, you know, being a human gaslighting is something that is universal and done. It's just Scientology has their own brand of gaslighting. And let's be honest, they're pretty darn good at it. But when you can recognize it, and I think that is the difference today too, Tori, from in the past. Right. Today, people are so much more educated on things right. and recognizing what gaslighting is. Not to protect them from a cult, but it works. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. If you understand what that is, you can recognize when somebody's trying to gaslight you and throw and stir the pot. You right. don't have to respond. You owe no one an explanation about anything, really. Right. But when you allow those buttons to be pushed and then respond like that, I mean, and this 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 happens outside of Scientology. Oh, but yeah. this is something that Scientology counts on: is that people will respond accordingly. When they are gaslit, the key is to be able to spot it and be like, and just basically and, like, and step away from the stove. Exactly. See, that's like Yachty told me that he was the guy running all this program to to get everybody to distract off of Hubbard, to distract off of the church, to divide and conquer that kind yeah. of thing. And he told me, he said, Tori, the only thing I can't handle is if somebody doesn't answer. That was the only thing. So you just have to realize just being quiet is a good thing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. There's so much that, that, that instinct to retaliate or push back, or it's just like, if you really want to get to that person who's gaslighting you do nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just go for it, man. You yeah. know, and, and your friends are going to stay your friends. And a lot, yeah. I think what happens is you think, well, all these other people are going to believe it. Yeah. But after a while I realized, okay, believe it. You know, it's like, I'm who I am. I've made over 900 videos. I have like DOA couldn't believe it. He goes, you have like almost 5 million views on your internet and you've never made any money on it. I haven't, <laughs> you know, cause they didn't have all this stuff back in my day. Well, we'll be changing that. Yeah, I hope so. I hope Definitely. so. Part of this program written by the Church of Scientology, by the Office of Special Affairs, it had a production target. And the target was by 30 April 2006, Tory discredited with the media, dismissed as an attacker or totally restrained and muzzled. And it's signed by the investigation chief of the Office of Special Affairs. There you go, Osa, way to go. Here it is on the the world is listening and hearing your your program to muzzle me. Look at look at how good that was. Yeah. Exactly. These so many of these documents have been has been leaked. It's really crazy. Let's yeah. grab a couple questions here. Sharona, thank you so much for being a member for a month. She says, you both give us so much info and insight. I love Tori's stories and info. I was up to 5 a.m. Eastern time watching Tori last night. Thanks oh. for doing what you all do. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love that. That's so great. Corn Freak. Hey, thank you for being Corn a member freak. for a month. Hi. Says, uh, I've been protesting in Chicago, Tori, and it would be great to see you come back. I adore you, brave women. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to come back. I would. It'd be fun. It'd be really fun. That's where I grew up in Park Ridge. Oh, nice. That would be fun. Yeah. Caroline has a question. Would the guy in the hat that Tori spoke to at the protest get into trouble for speaking to a declared person? I think she, I think she means Otto. No. O o Odo and I have been Odo. in communication for years. That's why I was able to talk to him. I didn't know it was him. Mm -hmm. I, he never had that beard. And he had on the hat. So I was just standing next to him. And the first thing I said, I thought he was just a CEO guy. And I said, you know, you didn't get into Scientology to stop free speech. I know that. 
Yeah. And I said a couple other things and then I sat down and yeah. someone yeah. said, Odo. And I said, is Odo here? Because we hadn't seen him in five years. So we thought he was either dead from COVID or he was out on the RPF, you know, forever kind of mm -hmm. thing. Because he was just gone. But we yeah. used to talk to him for like hours. We would go there and have long conversations trying to get him to leave and stuff. And uh, so anyway, they said, yeah, that's the guy with the beard. That's who you were talking to. So I went up and I said, oh, no, it's Tori. And he goes, I know. Yeah. Said, you realize Drew, and that's why he was smiling. And and because somebody said, we saw him smile. We've never seen him smile. And I said, yeah, that's because he knows me. Do you know what I mean? So no, he's not going to get in trouble for it. I don't think. Yeah, it is interesting. Misfit76 is asking, Tori, do you have any other family still in Scientology? My ex-husband. Mm -hmm. He's, He's the only in. one. Okay. All of his family, his parents were in, but they passed away. Mm -hmm. And my family, none of them. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Yeah. Gabriel's asking, if Scientology said, if we give you a million dollars, will you stop criticizing Scientology? Would you take the money? Personally, I'd like to say no, but probably take the money and run. <laughs> Well, a million dollars isn't that much. If they gave me $10 million, I might, but not with a million dollars, no. Yeah, not a million dollars. This isn't 1980 Scientology. Yeah, no. <laughs> and and I know people that you did pay off, and it's it's not a good deal. You know, it really isn't, because they get them, they make them sign all kinds of freedoms away. You know, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. No. Hear you there. Elizabeth is asking, Tori, are you or other protesters moving forward with calculating the cost of police and fire department services fraudulently being called to the cult of Scientology buildings and swatting? We are trying to work on it, but anybody out there could do this and help us. Do you see what I mean? Like one lady, uh, wait, I have her name. Her name is Fluffer Squirrel UK. Mm -hmm. And she has a list of every city and yeah. who are the SPs in that city. And um, now she has all the, um, I mentioned this and she's got all these guys on there, all the live streamers she's got yeah. listed out. So yeah, channel. that's one person who did something. Do you see what I mean? So like a lot of people go, we'd like to help. Well, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to call, you know, look, you can go through Google, call the LAPD and find out how much does it cost to send, you know, find out how much distance there is between yeah. you know, the Church of Scientology on L. Ron Hubbard Way and your your fire department. You know, how far is it? Yeah. And then find out how much how much does it cost to send one fire fire engine there? So there's one. And they usually send three. Like they sent three last night with Jessica. And um, an ambulance, same thing, and get the prices. Do you see what yeah. I mean? And then we can start adding it up. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody wants to jump on that, do, and yeah. then reach out, reach out and let us know. Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth is asking, Tori, did you see Oh No Nora's recommended questions to ask Scientologists to help them begin to question their training? And then do you agree with them or are you willing to further brainstorm on more? And if you didn't see Nora's video, she did this great video and it was questions like, what are you not allowed to have an opinion on? Oh, that's good. Not a good no, I'm sure I'm fine with her questions. You know, I, I'm sure, you know, that they're good questions and any question is a good question. That's the way I feel. It's like whatever you think, unless it's something putting them down, I'm absolutely against that because it, you know, just think of yourself when somebody says, oh, your hair looks really ugly today. I mean, if it's a friend saying, you know what, your hair needs to be this way or that way, that's different. But just somebody putting you down, who likes that? Nobody, you know, yeah. so anything but that I think is a good question. I mean, it's any question. There, there's People always ask me, what can I ask a Scientologist? I said, if I knew that, they'd all be out. Yeah, that's you know, right. It's like oh, they're yeah. not. So so do whatever you think is going to work because we don't know. You know, it might be something that you think of that none of us have thought of. Mm -hmm. And we'll go, oh, my God, we never even thought of that. And yeah. you know what I mean? So I say whatever's in your heart, always do things like Stacy told me, never say something on the Internet that you're not happy seeing on the New York Times the next day. And this was yeah. back when the paper was really big in 2000. And, but, but it's a good thing. You know, it's like, think about 
whatever you're going to do, be happy with it in 10 or five or 10 years. You know, if you're, if you're proud of what you're doing, do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's right. That makes sense. Sharon yeah. Serendipity, thank you so much for that. It says, thankfully, I live in the same time zone as Tori, so I only have to stay up till 2 a.m. <laughs> Natalie, I sent you a playlist. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for the playlist. Yeah, I usually catch your videos in the morning or the next right. day because for me, when you're getting started, it's one, two o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> no, yeah, right. Well, that's how Europe is. They they all love it in, in Australia and New Zealand mm -hmm. because they they get, catch it earlier. Yeah, Shelly makes a good point. She says, I always say, would I be okay with grandma seeing this post? <laughs> right, right. That's a very good thing to think about. Excellent point. Yep, that makes that makes a ton of sense. And so a lot of people are younger and they're not thinking about having kids and do you want your kids to see this and you know stuff on the internet is there for good. So do stuff yeah. that you're proud of. Yeah. Sassafras says that a friend that's from Clearwater told me that every week Scientology calls the local police and gets a tally of every complaint that mentions wow. Scientology. Wow. Mm -hmm. I believe it. I believe it. <clears throat> interesting mm -hmm. very interesting but, but see that's the thing that i do think we need to do more like the people out there if you want to do something put it on ripoff reports you know that you you know like even if you weren't in scientology you can still direct them to like www.xenu.net to read and learn about it and just say i know some people that were in it because you know us yeah. And they're now out. <clears throat> and, you know, if more people, that's the thing I see is that uh, like on Be Better Business Bureau, nobody reports these things. Mm -hmm. So they probably, they probably see tons of Scientology, how great it is. Yeah, completely. Yeah. That's a question. Tori, you really inspire me. How have you dealt with the loss of that kind of money? She must mean the million dollars that, that Scientology has of yours. I've made my own financial mistakes. It gives me hope that you're finding ways to move on. Well, you know, it's one of those things where when I first left, it was really spooky because we had my we had given, well, first of all, our mother-in-law had given our inheritance to Flag because remember, she was OT8. So she decided to give David Light called here and he goes, I have good news. We have Harold's OT four through eight paid for. That's that's a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And I said, okay, which is sort of a half acknowledgement. And then he said, Okay, let me call you right back. And he comes back, calls back and he goes, All right, good news. She paid for both of you, OT four through eight. So it was like, you know, we could have bought a house with that money, but yeah, it went to flag. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> how did I deal with it? You know, you have to get a job, you have to work, you have to move on. You know, that's just the way it is. It's like, I don't, I don't believe in regret. I really don't. Mm -hmm. It's it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, I could have had all that money. You know, it's like, okay, I did what I did. They got what they got. That's just the way it is. And I, I take it a day at a time. Ida used to call me, my friend Ida Camford. She was 85 and she would call, her son was in Scientology. She was not. But and he wouldn't talk to her for thirty years, and then she died. So that's really sad. But she would always say, "Take it a day at a time, Tori. Just take it a day at a time." She'd call me every day, and say we'd talk, and then she'd say, "Just remember, take it a day at a time." And that really helped me. It really did. Yeah, those are wise words. Wise yeah. words. Yeah. Uh, let's see. SP Wog's asking, what's the difference of gaslighting and fair gaming X members and plain critics? I mean, basically, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Fair game is basically gaslighting. It involves a lot. I mean, they might do other things that are a little bit more in intense than just regular gaslighting. But the whole point is to get you freaked out and flipped out. That's why so much of it and I think, I know, Tori, Aaron and I have had this conversation about how we have normalized some of the, um, you know, what would be considered fair game in Scientology. And we're like, like, you know, like when I was followed before, I was like, ah, now nah, we just followed around. I mean, that was it. <laughs> like, it's not a big deal. It's because so much of what they try to do is get under your skin and get you right. upset and stirred up so that you're so stuck in your own head that you become ineffective to continue to show up. They'll do things and try to say, things that they think you have buttons on 
that they can push and get you all, like I said, stirred up and stuck in your head about it. And I mean, there's people in the world outside of Scientology who do that to people, which is referred to as gaslighting or, you know, emotional abuse type type behavior. But at the end of the day, it all, you know, we don't have to react to it. And that is to react to it. And it, and it's, we are who we are. You know, it's like, I, that's been a big thing for me because my dad was a celebrity and he had big celebrity friends. And one of them was getting, I forget what you call it, where they, they're trying to get money out of him. What's that Mm -hmm. called? Embezzlement. They were trying to embezzle money from him and, and, and use like secrets that they knew about him. And so we would talk about it at dinner and I just thought, this is a nightmare. And I remember I was like 15 and I thought, that's it. I'm never going to go through this. Not that I thought I'd be a celebrity, but I just thought, I I don't want to have to even worry about this. I'm just going to tell people everything about me. And if they don't like me, that's okay. You know, this is who I am. Yeah. And and it's like, so that's why on my SP Declare, it's just a bunch of bullshit. Right. (laughs) It's They don't have any secrets on me because I told everybody my secrets, Mm -hmm. all my shit that I've done. <clears throat> including the one thing we're going to talk about today, you know, that, you know, I've told everybody that it's like, okay, that's what, that's what I did. You know, do you want me to tell them now? Yeah. Let's hear it. Let's let's well, yes, let's, we talked about this and I know you were unsure about chatting about it, but there is a something in Tori's past people that you need to know about. And then you need to make your own decisions about it. And you tell me in the chat, you tell me in the comments, if you're catching this on the replay, once you hear this about Tori, you may never be the same. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. First of all, I have to take you back to the sixties. And I was a very wild and crazy thing. My parents moved from Park Ridge to Lake Forest. Lake Forest is a very wealthy suburb. I lost all my friends. I became crazy, started sneaking out, drinking, all kinds of stuff. And then went to college, left college, went to New York, left New York, went to San Francisco for the summer of love. So I'm a hippie, right? So that's me. I'm basically a hippie still. You know, that's just kind of how I am. So now I join a cult and I'm in it for 30 years. (laughs) But I was in the Sea Org and they routed me out. And so now I got to get a job, right? And these girls, we were on the minister's course in the day in Scientology, becoming ministers, right? Mm -hmm. And you were how old then? Huh? This is when you were about how old? Like, I think 23. 23, being a hippie, doing the, yeah, I I see it. I see it. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, This was in the 60s. I was a hippie. And then now I'm getting Scientology. And I was in the Sea Org. They routed me out. And now I'm, I'm getting work. And these girls go, well come with us. We're going down to this diamond dance. And I said, what is that? And they said, you just dance around with these old guys and they pay us some money. So I said, okay. So we go down to diamond dance and it's like ballroom dancing, which most people probably don't even know what that is. But anyway, we're ballroom dancing just for a few minutes. And then we would sit down. They had no alcohol. So then you just have like Coke and we would practice our TRs, right? (laughs) Which is their training routines, you know, confronting someone and acknowledging their communication, stuff like that. So all of a sudden, and remember, Scientology is like a triangle on both sides, you know, mm-hmm. auditing and training. Yeah. So these guys were at the top of the training part. They were, they were class eights and class sixes. I was like way, way down at the Dianetics course. That was me. So I'm just like a little Dianetic auditor. And to me, they were like, oh my God, you know, they were just like these unbelievable people because they were class eights and class sixes. So they come up to me and they go, look, that's it. We're not making any money at this diamond dance thing. Right down the street from Temple Street, which is where Asho used to be. Now it's on L. Ron Hubbard Way, but it used to be on Temple Street. And right down the street from that was the Fox Theater. And they said, look, we can go do topless dancing and we'll make $200 a week and tips. And I was like, I'm not going to go topless dancing, which is really, if you knew me, that I even said that is really weird because I was like totally wild and crazy. Anything somebody wanted to do, I was like, I'm in, I'll do it. So <laughs> the fact that I didn't, but it was it was just like, that was like over the top. It was like, no, I'm not going to do that. 
But then I thought about it. I thought, well, they're class sixes and class eights. Yeah, and these that. are just so you guys know on the bridge to total freedom. These are very high level trained Scientology auditors. Yeah, at the top of the triangle. Yeah, they're top, top, top. So I'm thinking, okay, if these top auditors are going to do topless dancing, I guess I can. So we all four go down to the Fox Theater and we're young, cute looking chicks, right? You know, and we go, you have to hire all four of us or none of us. And the guy goes, come on in. And back then it wasn't like it is now because I ended up when the Portland Crusade, I had to call my husband and they said, just go in that topless place. And I went in there and it was really sleazy. I mean, they had the poles and these girls were dancing around and it was way different. Our day, it was like go sort of like go-go dancing. And yeah, most yeah. people probably don't even know what that is, but it's just sort of like jumping around to some music. You know, it was, it was nothing compared to what it is now. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, we, we were, it was so ironic that we were on the minister's course of the day and we're topless dancing at night. And the next day in Scientology, then they're going, the girls are here. They've got the money. They've got cash. You know, everybody was like, the girls are back. You know, it was, it was nothing. They, we never went to ethics, not ever. No one ever in 30 years of me even be, they never, it never came up. It never came up in session. It never, they sent me to ethics, nothing, you know, but that day that, you know, those in the sixties and seventies, this is the early seventies. It was just a different world. And I try to tell people that all the time. And Bob Minton, he loved it because he when he helped, he helped me get across the country, he paid for the ticket. He was a multimillionaire who helped start this Lisa McPherson Trust in Clearwater mm -hmm. at the time. And they were helping people get out. And so he he and Stacy, who also started the Lisa McPherson Trust and Jesse, but Stacy and Bob were in this bedroom with me and they, we stayed up all night long. And he was like, I don't get, how could you be in something like this? I just don't get it. Well, when I told him about the sixties and the seventies in Scientology, he went, Oh my God, I get it. Yeah. And, he looked, and everybody was screwing everybody. I mean, we were, it was just a giant party. We were having a good time. Yeah. I mean, it was it very was different. different time. Different time. I've, I've heard that so much in Scientology that the early days were quite a bit like that. And I can just picture you ladies, you're coming <laughs> into the Scientology church and like making it rain in there with all your topless dancing money to pay for Scientology. And Scientology had zero problem. Meanwhile, no. fast forward to the 2000s and oh. I get in trouble for taking a strip fitness class. Right a fitness class that was on a pole fully clothed. And right. I got in trouble for that. <laughs> different time. It's totally different. And that's why I try to tell people it is so different now than it was then. It's just, yeah. it, it's hard to even imagine. I mean, imagine now having people come in with cash and having them go, oh, the girls are here. Yeah, ne yeah. It would never happen. Not ever. You'd be immediately sent to ethics and gone, what are you thinking of? You know, this is completely not what a Scientologist is, but they didn't even have what a Scientologist was back then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. Well, Tori, we are going to have to do this again. <laughs> we absolutely will. We'll get, uh, we have, there's a lot more stories to tell and things to share. And I'm so glad that we were able to go through that program today that Osa wrote to get rid of you back in early 2000. And obviously they failed. It did not work because yeah. here you right. are still. What can I say? Epic fail. Epic fail. Epic and it's fail. such an easy thing. I try to remind Osa, it's a simple thing. You can stop doing all your evil things that you guys do mm -hmm. that are nasty, stopping free speech, breaking up families, medical abuse, fair game, all that stuff. You can stop doing that. Really stop overcharging people a fortune for stuff that isn't worth yeah. that and charge them a fair deal. Stop saying you're a religion because you know you're not. Yeah. I don't care how much you guys are brainwashed thinking you are, you're not. Mm -hmm. And you don't practice religion and you're a business. That's all there is to it. So be a business, be a self-improvement thing. And I think you'd be huge and probably get rid of the OT levels because they really don't work and you know it. And David Miscavige, you of all people know it. That's right. That's right. Make sure you guys go over and subscribe to Tori Magoo 44. Thank you. Yeah, please do. I, I, my, they hate it when my subscriptions go up. They just hate yeah. it. 
and it's been fun because it's really going up now with the with the live stream people. Yeah, it's I great. love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. All right, Tori, hold tight. Yeah, we have a wonderful trip if you go oh, on the trip. Yep, we are. We're going. We're going this weekend. We will be in Clearwater, enjoying enjoying some sun, sand, and a little protesting Scientology. It's like all my favorite things all wrapped into one. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, say hi to everybody for me. Absolutely, I'll send a special message. Tori <laughs> says hi. Tori says hi. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could send me your old uh, pasties from the stripper days, and we'll just <laughs> show up at Flag. <laughs> I didn't have them. Remember I told you. Oh, that's right. That's right. You didn't have those. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody else, thank you so much for being here. I am doing another interview today, probably in the next 13 minutes. So hopefully you will join me back live. And if you can't I'm catch not me, as exciting as me. <laughs> definitely. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, he has a whole different thing that's very exciting, which is the whole England thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that's a whole different thing that I I think it's really great what he did. Yeah, so we're going to find out about it. Yeah, it'll be good. I'll watch it. Yes, good. All right. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Hit that like button on your way out. Make sure you subscribe to Tori's channel and you check your subscribe button on my channel too. Hope you.